So I would like to talk about NF tables and why NF tables. The reason why I'm giving this lightning talk is that whenever I read an article about NF tables, there are also some comments saying something like, why are they changing everything or why are they throwing out so well-tested code? And um, what I want to show is that there are some fundamental design limitations in the current IP tables architecture that are simply not solvable. Um, aside from doing everything uh, uh, in another way. Um, first of all, when I say IP tables, I mean IP tables user space, I mean IP6 tables, I mean EB tables, and I mean the IP tables kernel part. I'm specifically not talking about connection tracking or the net engine in the kernel, because that's something that we are not changing. It stays the same even with NF tables, because there's no, re no reason to change it. One of the huge problems with IP tables is that it's dumb. In IP tables, you have a split between a kernel part and a user part. The kernel part is, for its instance, a C-written mo module or a C-written target that performs a particular task, for instance, matching on TCP ports or matching on connection tracking states or altering the TCP maximum sequence size or something like that. But the user space part it is nothing but a parser. It translates the user input into a binary representation for the kernel. It has no idea what the match is actually doing. So the, so the contract match in user land or the, the, the TCP port part in user land has no idea what it's actually doing. It's just translating strings to a binary representation. Why is that a problem? Because nowadays you have many, much, 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 much more rules than you used to have because the use cases have changed. Nowadays you have a hypervisor or a large gateway and you have literally tens of thousands of rules. And in IP tables, the rule evaluation is linear. So it starts at the top and then moves downwards and until when there's a final match like accept or drop, then the evaluation ends. But if you have 10,000 rules um, and none of the rules matches, then IP tables has to inspect every single one of them. So it's slow. In IB tables, um, it's not so, or it did not used to be such a huge problem because people have come up with various creative workarounds around the architectural varks. So for instance, administrators um, try to partition their rules in a way so that the most frequently used ones will be more at the top, or they will play clever tricks with custom chains to, um, to uh, put certain TCP packets into a custom chain and have some evaluation there to, to, to avoid linear um, evaluation for everything. But um, there is no automatic way to resolve it because, as I said, IP tables is dumb and it has no idea what it's actually doing. Um, the other uh, thing is that when you have like a blacklist, or, um, you don't want um, 10,000 rules for a 10,000 IP blacklist. So some smart people came up with IP sets, so that's an extra add-on to IP tables and you can add a blacklist set and then you add IP addresses and then, then you have a single rule that can match on the contents of the set and make a binary yes, no decision. But that's about it. You can, uh, cannot, for instance, use IP tables to, to implement jump tables. It's simply not possible. You cannot say, um, for this network, jump to chain blah in, in, a, in a single decision logic. In NF tables, um, everything is redesigned in that the kernel part of NF tables is, for the lack of a better term, simply a virtual machine. And the NF tables user space program is basically a compiler. So if in NF, ta NF tables you say TCP deport 22, then what it actually emits to the kernel is uh, something like payload, transport header, um, two bytes into register one, and then a compare of register one to the um, big Indian representation of the number 22. So the user space has much more knowledge, much more protocol specific knowledge has moved to the user space. So in user space, you can now do things like detection of dead rules. You can um, detect uh, adjacent loads and um, combine, for instance, a load of the source and destination address into a single eight-byte load from the uh, from the transport header or the IP or the network header. Um, that's basically the one advantage why NF tables is being pushed. The other one is the native set integration. That means in NF tables you can have jump maps. You can say for um, this network with uh, 
this destination port jump to this particular chain, and then for instance in that chain you only put the rules for a particular virtual machine. So whenever the kernel will find uh, such a map, it does a uh, lookup in a data structure, which is currently either a hash table or a black tree, and then it has an immediate decision without a linear overhead in evaluating it. Um, and this is simply not possible with IP tables. There's no way you can do it unless you basically duplicate the entire kernel engine in user land and then have some kind of user land rule optimizer and that's just crazy. Um, the other um, various limitations are, are some kind of, I would like to have this and that. For instance, many people would like to have notifications when, when IP tables rules are changed, which you get for, for instance, for routing, routing tables, it's not a problem. You can subscribe to a, to a NetLink socket and the kernel informs you when routing information is changed. And in NF tables, you have something like that as well which uh, due to the change of the backend back protocol to Netlink is what was, mu was much, much, much simpler to implement than IP tables because in IP tables you actually don't do never change single rules, but, it, but when you add an IP tables command, what, what, what happens is that IP tables loads the entire binary blob of the table into user land, then mangles that huge binary blob to append the new structure, and then pumps everything back into the kernel so the kernel has actually no idea what has changed. It just, just gets a new binary blob and that's it. So any questions? Uh, the connection checking engine is not changing at all. What is changing is that you don't have a, a connection checking match in NF tables, but, the, but it's called expression there, but it's basically the same. So. Um, in NF tables, you don't have a logic that, say, um, matches on established or on the connection marked, but there is an expression that says, uh, load the connection checking marked into register three, and then you can perform any arbitrary action on it. Yes? Is it, it is uh, currently not compiled, but interpreted. There is a fast loop for uh, compares, but for uh, most expressions, it's um, it's C code on the kernel side that is interpreted. So it's a pseudo, pseudo language at the moment. There is no JIT, but I guess you could implement JIT for most things. The one problem that, that you would solve is that um, the NF tables registers are 128 bits wide to help with IPv6 comparisons. So there you cannot match them one to one to CPU usage. Any more questions? Um, there's currently only the NFT binary or the NF tables binary, um, and there's a compat layer that tries to uh, take existing IP table safe output and transform it into an NF tables uh, rule tree. So the theory is that there's backwards compatibility, hopefully. NF tables, good question. The NF tables user space is just user space, and the NF table kernel part was merged recently. So if you use 3.13, then you already have it. Yeah, yeah, doesn't conflict. NF tables just uh, uses the, we use the same hook points in the kernel that IP tables does. Um, I, I honestly don't know, but I think it dep simply depends on the, on the order in which you load the modules. If you load, load the IP tables module first, then the IP table hook will have higher priority and will get loaded first, and after that, NF tables if you didn't drop the packet. But I would have to check the code. I'm not 100% sure. More questions? Oh, the <laughs> contract to use status test to stay. Yes, the connection checking engine is completely unchanged and contract D stays around and the contract tool stays around and it works exactly like before because it uses the same code. Yeah. Yes? Um, yes, for instance, um, the jump tables, you can't do that with IP tables. Jump maps. So, in, so in, uh, in, it looks like, in NF tables it looks like this, you say something like, 
IP uh, SRWL dot uh, TCP S port dot and then a curly brace and then you can give uh, an IP address, a dot and a number and uh, and after that you can give it, for instance, a chain name or a, a verdict like drop or accept and the next line again and again and again and the, that's compiled into a single data structure like a hash table or a red black tree and so on. Yes, exactly. It's one single step, like a switch statement in C. 